I don't dare preach without a, something to lean on because I'm an old missionary, which means that I'm used to sermons that run between 40 minutes and an hour and a half if you don't have notes to keep me on track. <laughs> and we don't want to go there. That's good. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. We're reminded today, as Pastor Jim was saying as we began, that hell invaded this earth a long, long time ago. And the powers of darkness have brought all kinds of evil. And uh, sometimes things happen like what happened today in, in Connecticut that remind us just how dark the world is. We're not used to that. I suppose on a, on a historical scale, what happened today in Newtown, Connecticut was something that's happening every day around the world somewhere. Maybe not on the scale that it was today, but when the angels appeared on Christmas night and sang, do you remember what they sang? I always think of it as a choir. The, I'm sure it was a choir like no other. No, no. <laughs> By the way, uh, would some of you guys like to come over and sing at the Lutheran service? <laughs> we'll let you wear the white robes. <laughs> We're down to one man in our choir over there. And nice to hear the male section singing there. The picture that, that the words of the Bible present is as though a battle-hardened 1st Marine Division were teleported home from Afghanistan and appeared on the Queen Valley Golf Course still wearing their helmets and their Kevlar vests and their combat boots and their camouflage uniforms all covered with battle dust, waving M16s and squad automatic weapons over their head. And then they all started to shout and sing because they had some tremendous message that they wanted us all to hear. The Bible says a multitude of the heavenly host appeared. That means an army of angels appeared. No wonder, no wonder the shepherds were impressed. The old King James says they were so afraid. I bet. And when we think about it, most of us think that what the angel sang was joy to the world because maybe because we've seen a lot of Christmas pageants with usually little children dressed up as <laughs> angels and other characters. And since that's the song in the book that is appropriate, that's what they usually sing. But if you look at the Bible, we're told that the, this vast army of powerful warrior angels actually said these words, glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. The Lord Jesus tells us time and again all through his earthly ministry that his purpose in coming was for the glory of his Father. He says over and over again, I'm not doing anything except exactly what my Father has told me to do. I'm not saying anything except what my Father has told me to say. And so his mission was to reveal the greatness and the justice and the mercy and the character of his Father to us. All the, every word he spoke, every miracle, every healing was there to reveal his Father to us. And so his coming to earth was first of all for the glory of God. And there's a Hebrew idiom 
where the, the phrase to give glory to God means confess your sins. For example, when Joshua discovered that the uh, that Achan, because of his sin, was the responsible party for the Israelis, the Is Israelites being defeated by their enemies at the Battle of Ai when they first came to the Promised Land, he took Achan aside and he said, My son, give glory to God and tell me what you've done. In other words, God knows it all already and he's made sure that your sin has found you out. Now come clean. Make a clean breast of it. Confess your sins and let's deal with it. Give glory to God. And in, in this case, by admitting that he's right and you've been wrong. It admits who's really in charge. Not me. When the angels came on Christmas night, their first message was glory to God in the highest because the greatness of God and the wonder of his grace and his love, his justice and his majesty were being displayed for all of heaven to see on that night when Almighty God the Son became a man and was laid in a manger the very picture of weakness and helplessness. And the angels shouted and sang that in heaven and before everyone who was watching from there, this revealed the glory of God. Because it revealed the, the very character of who God is. The angels also told us that this event meant on earth peace, goodwill toward men. In Hebrew, the word shalom means so much more than the English word peace. The English word means an absence of conflict, and it means a feeling of calm and, and well-being. But the Hebrew word shalom means peace, wholeness, completeness, prosperity, welfare, health. It means everything that you might hope for from God's blessing being declared over you. Shalom. It means that the enmity between God and man is taken away so that we have peace with God. It means that the distance between God and us is bridged so that we can know him and live in fellowship with him and receive from him all that he wants to give us. And that's where the peace with God turns into the peace of God, the wholeness, the completeness, the restoration of God's blessing on his creation and the peace in our hearts that results from that. Forgiveness and healing and restoration in God's abundant provision of all of our needs, welfare, health, peace with God and the peace of God. These are all things that God wants to give you and me. From God's point of view, there is goodwill toward men. There always has been. And that goodwill on God's part was shown most dramatically and proven most surely by what happened at Christmas when God himself became a man-child to live and teach and love and finally suffer and die and rise again for our salvation. God wants to pour all of these things out on us. But he can't so long as we continue to be separated from him. So long as we continue to live in rebellion against his word and reject his will, his purpose, and his way in our lives, that separation stays there. And that gulf continues to come between us. So God, for his part, bridged that gulf at Christmas. 
himself became a man, a child. He put himself into the care of a young mother and father, and he grew. And as a man, he showed us what being a man was all about in God's plan. He showed us what a man in perfect fellowship with the Father would look like, how he would talk, what he would do, how he would love the people around him. The Bible says that God the Son humbled himself, emptied himself of all the privileges of Godhood, and lived as a mere man among men. But being a man in perfect fellowship with God, and being at the same time God the Son, he also revealed to us the very character and nature of God. He demonstrated the full meaning of peace, shalom on earth, and goodwill from God toward mankind. And everything that he said and did as he lived here, And now, today, he offers that peace to us. That return to the privileged status of perfect fellowship, perfect union with our Heavenly Father. The removal of that tremendous barrier, that vast gulf that separates us from God. He offers that to us. Because Jesus has already taken the punishment for our sin. He's already borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. As soon as we turn from our sin and give glory to God, admit that he's right and we're wrong, we find God ready and waiting, even anxious to forgive us and restore us and renew the relationship with us. Because there is good goodwill on God's part toward us still. Even though we have sinned and even though we don't deserve anything good from God, we can find that God is only too ready to make us his own. <coughs> have you ever thought about what a privileged position it is to be one of the select few among mankind who are lifted up from the ash heap dusted off, cleansed of all our filth, and set on high as God's own beloved children. This world is such a dark place. The events of this morning demonstrated all over again. And people have become so confused as the knowledge of the Word of God has become dim in our own culture to the point that I hear people complaining about the fact that Christians are trying to turn Christmas into a religious holiday. <laughs> they have no idea what it's about. And the darkness caves in on us. Today there are 20 families who were getting ready to celebrate Christmas, however they do that, in their family. to face Christmas with the loss of a child because of the craziness and the darkness in the heart of one man. That's where it leads. That's where a life without God will take us. That's where we all end up. That's the nature of the darkness and so God invaded earth once again. And he offers us this privilege of being taken out of this darkness and transferred into the kingdom of his son, the kingdom of light, into the knowledge of his word, in the light that can show us the way through this life, even when tragedy strikes. The wonder of it all is that everyone here tonight is being personally invited by God to sit in that exalted position forever. 
God has arranged for you to be here tonight and hear that invitation once again. He knows everything that's gone on in your life, all that happens where no one else can see, everything that makes you feel ashamed and unworthy to even approach him, and he forgives and accepts you, and he longs to heal and restore and recover you. And because that very act reveals the nature of God and his unspeakable love for you, his creation, your forgiveness, restoration, and renewal brings glory to God in the highest heaven because it reveals the very character of God. So for us, once again, for you and for me, the angels sing glory to God in the highest and on earth, peace, goodwill toward men and women and boys and girls and grandmas and grandpas and sons and daughters. And peace, goodwill to mankind. If you haven't done it before, will you let Jesus come in and bring you that peace, that goodwill on his part, that forgiveness and joy and restoration of all that God wants for you tonight? Will you let the glory of God be seen in your life from now on? If you did, if, if that's something that, that happened in your life years ago, think about it, what it means tonight. You are one of the select few on the planet who have the inside story of what was going on on Christmas night. It wasn't about Santa Claus, much to everybody's surprise. It was about God coming to earth to reveal who he is and offer to us the privilege of being restored to know him, to walk with him, to fulfill the purpose for which he created you. Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace, God's goodwill toward us revealed in a baby born in a manger to be your Savior. Heavenly Father, we pray that as you have said in your word, as you have offered to us so many times in our lives, you would reveal that goodness, that forgiveness, the glory that came to earth on Christmas night, the glory that made the angels sing and shout for joy. We pray, Lord, that you would open our hearts to see and understand and receive that. And we thank you for giving us this wonderful gift and privilege to celebrate tonight, even in the face of the darkness of this world. Thank you for letting us in on it. We worship and praise you tonight, Lord Jesus. Amen.